Hi, my name is Laurent. I'm happy to start this new chapter dedicated to data and image analysis with you. In this first video, we will focus on digital images. In particular, we will see how images are represented in a computer. Along this tutorial, I will be using a software named ImageJ to show some examples. I invite you to download the software on your computer so that you can follow along. As you know, digital images exist on a variety of formats on your computer, like TIFF, JPEG or PNG, each of them suitable for a particular application. Ultimately, all digital images can be visualized as a multidimensional grid of pixels, named the image matrix. Let's look at an example image. This image is a 2D grayscale image. It has two dimensions, the width and the height. If we zoom in a number of times, we start distinguishing the individual pixels that form the image. Pixels are the smallest unit of an image. Grouped together in a grid, they form the image. Pixels have coordinates. For a 2D image, these are the X and Y coordinates of the pixel in the image. Pixels also have a pixel value, or intensity. The higher the value, the brighter the pixel. As said previously, images are just grid of numbers, or matrices, that are convenient to make calculations. However, it is more convenient to look at them using gray level representation. We can also use artificial colors, called lookup table to have a more comprehensive view of the image. However, keep in mind that we are still looking at a grayscale image, which is different than a multi-channel color image. Using a given lookup table, it is possible to adjust the brightness of an image to better visualize the dimmer part. For instance, on this picture of a cell, we can increase the brightness of the blue channel. Adjusting the display does not change the pixel value, unless you click apply. It only changes the way the computer displays the image on the screen. In particular, it is important to use the same display parameter when visually comparing two fluorescent images on the screen. For instance, on this picture of a cell on the right side, all blue pixels with a value above 50 are displayed with the same brightest blue shade. As a result, those two images look different, even though the data underlying is the same. Pixel values can only fall in a range given by the bit depth of the image. The range of possible values is given by the formula 2 to the power of the bit depth. For an 8-bit image, 2 to the power of 8 gives 256 possible gray values, between 0 and 255. Images from a microscope are usually stored as 16-bit images meaning a bit more than 65,000 possible gray values. Higher bit image can describe finer intensity variation. However, they occupy more space on the disk. Decimal and floating point decimal and negative value for the pixel are not allowed, except for floating type images. RGB image are an example of multi-dimensional image. They have three dimensions, the width, the height and the color. The color dimension has three channels, the red, the green and the blue channel for RGB. The different channels can be split to visualize the contribution from every color. They can be visualized either using grayscale or dedicated lookup table. As a result, pixel value for RGB image are represented as a triplet of the three contributions from the different channel. RGB image are an example of 3D image with three colors on the channel dimension. Scientific image might have a higher number of channels. Typically, there is one channel for every floor or in the sample. Additional dimensions are also possible, like a time dimension if you are recording a time lapse experiment, or a Z dimension if you are recording a volume. Anyway, for multidimensional images, it is always possible to split them in a collection of unique images. That's all you need to know about digital images for now. You have learned that images 
or multidimensional grid of pixels. Pixels have coordinates and pixel value, which are bounded by the bit depths of the image. Images can have multiple dimensions, which can always be split in a collection of unique images. That's it for this first video. I thank you for your attention. I invite you to watch the next video, which will be about software for bioimage analysis.